Hello class, my name is Hannah Green and I'm one of the students in our educational technology class this semester. This week we will be talking about using data to inform learning and teaching and we will be using chapter 12 in our textbook. in order to talk about that. So this chapter covers both simulation and, and other data analysis tools that are used to facilitate exploring and understanding of problem solving in the classroom. This chapter also offers suggestions and resources to support teachers as integration of these technology-based problem solving approaches in the classroom. So not only does it talk about what we can do in the classroom in order to um, use simulation and other data analysis tools, but it also provides practical websites and other options for how we can go about doing that. So first, let's talk about data analysis. Data analysis is the process of transforming data into information. The traditional pr approach used in data analysis, it started by originally forming a hypothesis and then collecting data and then testing that hypothesis as a result. However, in about 1970, John Tukey and others began um, to change this process by establishing a new approach called exploratory data analysis. And in this approach, one first collects data and then they investigate the data with an open mind and few assumptions. And so using this data analysis called exploratory data analysis or EDA, one looks for patterns in data in order to generate hypotheses. So there are two valuable cognitive skills that warrant special emphasis for pre-K to 12th grade students. And these can be used through problem or through, excuse me, um, data analysis tools. Number one, um, through data analysis tools, they're given the ability to analyze a variety of problems and understand um, how to select and use productivity tools to find solutions. And also they are given the ability to understand the theoretical background in order to use software problems to solve different types of problems encountered in both professional and, um, and personal activities. So these activities, what they do is they help students to learn how to collect, interpret, and represent data, which helps them in the real world to make decisions in business, politics, and research. We can see every day whenever we open up the newspaper how prevalent data analysis is in our everyday lives and how often it is used um, in order to make decisions about everything from the food that we eat to um, the amount of time spent in classroom instruction to um, whether or not you move a student up into another year of school. It can be used in a lot of different ways and it's important that our students understand exactly how to go about um, interpreting and analyzing data correctly. So first we talked about data analysis and next we will be talking about simulations. A simulation is the process of imitating a real situation or object with a set of mathematical formulas. So in this way they can imitate many different things from weather conditions to nuclear accidents to medical techniques and product safety testing. Um, they are often used to test theories of causal relationships and they can also be used to um, do things for example like um, simulate we will be talking in a minute about a lemonade stand, for example, to help them learn about business techniques or even an election process to help them understand the process of, uh, of voting in America. So in order to effectively incorporate simulations in our curriculum, it is vital that we do not just um, maybe add it into one lesson very briefly, but it is important that we integrate it into the curriculum to make sure that our students understand um, how important it is um, and to be so that we use it for an extended period of time in the classroom. These simulations can be used to do many different things. First, it can be used to visualize the invisible. 
It can be used to manipulate variables, observe results, and draw conclusions. It can also be used to facilitate role playing. Um, it can be used in gaming approaches. It can be used to mimic real world situations. And it can involve multiple participants. So these simulations can be created through web pages, Java, Director, or even commercial software programs such as KidSim and SimCalc, which allow students to create their own simulations. What's super nice is that on the internet, there are already a lot of simulations that have already been created, which means that we as educators do not have to do nearly as much work as we would in order to create the simulations ourselves. So both simulation software and data analysis activities, they help to develop the central elements of statistics. Um, just so you know, statistics is defined as a set of methods used to collect, analyze, present, and interpret data. It is so important for students to learn how to develop statistical inference because this is something they will use in daily life in order to solve problems and make informed decisions. An example of a student-oriented statistics and data analysis software program is something called Inspire Data which focuses on students developing data literacy. This software includes the capacity to build databases and then visually analyze the data with multiple plot types such as VIN, stack, pi, and access plots. Students can see the meaning of data by visualizing animated data as they change over time. If you're looking for um, how to get this Inspire Data program, it is in your textbook in that chapter. So if you look at page 314 to 317 of the book, you can see many different resources that provide simulations, activity examples, and other online resources and data sets that may be useful in the classroom. If you are looking for ways to incorporate this into your classroom, there are also two activities on page 318 to 319 that could be a really neat activity for you to do in your classroom. The first activity involves um, experiencing real world business operations by starting off on a lemonade stand simulation and then challenging students using higher order thinking skills to begin to think about inventory, um, stock prices, marketing, payroll, how you would even handle said lemonade stand in order to make sure that it succeeds. The second activity involves using an election simulation to formulate questions such as how ballot design affects voting processes and voting patterns. Um, these students can create a program to automate the voting process on a computer and then you can have students compare, contrast, and critique results and procedures. In summary, simulations and data analysis tools are very useful um, to support techno technologically driven problem solving approaches and the development of problem solving skills. It is still so important though um, for there to be teachers who are willing to challenge students um, and to, to help them to make connections to teach higher order thinking skills. So these simulations and data analysis tools in and of themselves are not going to be what drives our students to critically think. It will be us as teachers um, helping them to make connections that will um, cause them to think even more than just about the simulation, but about how this simulation and these data analysis tools really um, relate to real, the real world and how it affects us here in society today. So thank you.